Hello, bonjour, comment ça va? Welcome back to another Tuesday VD versus Link. This time we're going to be using Half Life Alex. Let's go! Welcome back to VR Essentials, where we talk about the practical uses of VR. My name is Lazio SK and today we're talking about the update of Virtual Desktop. The last time we spoke about Virtual Desktop, it was version 10.1 now. Link in the description below to find out how to install Virtual Desktop. And of course, we're going to be comparing it with Oculus Link as well. So we're really going to put it through its paces using all types of different performance settings using Half-Life Alex because a lot of people have been saying it doesn't work and a lot of other people have been saying they have no issues. So, hmm what's true and what isn't. Just in case you're not familiar, virtual desktop is basically a piece of technology that enables you to stream anything from your desktop directly into your Oculus Quest completely wirelessly without any cables. So the question is, well, why would you need Oculus Link, which also enables you to play PC VR based VR experiences onto your Oculus Quest, but this time you're tethered with a cable. So what are the differences? Well, this is why we do these Tuesdays VD versus Link episodes weekly. In today's episode, we're going to be doing two main tests. One is me standing right next to the router. And then the other one is me standing about 15 meters away with a wall and the door closed between the router and myself. So at least I'll give you a good indication as to the performance in between both tests. First, let's begin with me standing right next to the router. For the purpose of today's test, I'll be using more or less what everyone else will be using in terms of the settings in Steam. I won't be putting anything on ultra high or ultra fast today. I wasn't aware of this, but inside of Half-Life Alex, you can actually change the performance settings that you want during your gameplay. So you can choose low, medium, high or ultra high so that's really cool so we're going to be testing all the different levels except for low because i think most people will be able to use medium generally speaking if i experience any stutter with virtual desktop it's either when i'm crouching down or if i'm moving left to right with my actual body but in this time when i was using medium setting i had no issue everything was really smooth okay my router was literally a meter away from me so i decided to in this case crank it up straight away to high when I put the settings to high, I did notice some stutter, but very unnoticeable. I really did feel that my gameplay was actually pretty smooth. I was able to move around in continuous, shoot some zombies and, you know, throw some canisters and blow up some monsters without any issues at all. Generally speaking, the stutter occurs before a scene is going to load. So, for example, if you're behind a wall and then suddenly you go after the wall and then there'll be a whole bunch of different monsters there, that could be a reason why it could cause a little bit of stutter. It's the machine that's trying to think and it needs that power to be able to put everything together. As I don't have an Ethernet cable, generally speaking, if I'm standing right next to my router, then if I'm using the high setting, it's generally okay. So then I cranked up the setting even more to ultra fidelity, which is ultra high, the highest you could possibly go in the performance settings of the Half-Life Alex. I really wasn't sure how it was going to perform as since version 10.1 of Virtual Desktop until now, I was having really so many issues, so much stuttering that it was really hard to play even on the lowest of settings of Half-Life Alex. So I was pleasantly surprised when 12.1 could really handle the ultra fidelity pretty well. As you can tell, we're inside of a subway station or train station, and there's a lot of different assets around from posters on the walls, on the floor, and there's also a lot of debris around, some barrels and cones, of course the monsters, and a lot of particle effects as well, because this can actually cause some real processing power. And then when you're changing your gun, and then you start shooting, this also plays in the part of causing a lot of stutter. But it was really great to see that the version 12.1 finally could really hand it like a charm, just like it used to be in version 10.0. Okay, so now let's talk a little bit more if you're not standing right by your router and you're not using an Ethernet cable. Let's just imagine that you're about 10, 15 meters away from your router and there's a wall with a door closed in between, or maybe you're under the router. So your router is on another level of your home or wherever you might be. What's great about Half-Life Alex is that when you load it and you get to the main menu, it will be able to tell you whether, first of all, you're running too many applications on your computer, which could basically mean that the performance won't be great, or if the connection that you have with the game will not actually be strong enough 
for the game to run smoothly. Interestingly enough, when I was in my green screen, which is again about 10, 15 meters away from the router with the door closed and the wall in between, there was definitely some issues. As you can tell by the footage, when I was moving my head left and right, I could see the shutters on the right side. So basically what it means is I could see black and I could see the scene rendering itself as I was actually turning my head due to a low performance in frames per second. And whilst I was approaching the monster and loading my gun, the frames also seemed to be a little choppy. But I have to admit, it wasn't giving me any motion sickness or making me feel like I wanted to stop playing. It was certainly nothing compared to version 10.1 or version 11 of Virtual Desktop, which basically rendered the game unusable. I also noticed that these issues occurred mainly when the scene was probably still loading because after a minute or two it just stopped and I was able to play completely normally again. As you can tell from the footage I'm walking inside one of the carriages without any problems and I'm just walking around and then I'm also throwing some barrels of petrol onto the monsters and they're exploding and there's no stuttering of any kind at any point in time. When I really had some issues is when I changed the setting to Ultra Fidelity, which is the highest performance setting you could choose on Half-Life Alex. There was a lot more stuttering going on and also when I was walking, for example, in a straight line, you would see the frames basically freezing and then unfreezing very, very rapidly. It's literally a nanosecond that goes in between, but it's enough to make me feel uncomfortable and want to crank down the settings back to medium. As high, I also had some issues. Now, Virtual Desktop do recommend that you use an Ethernet cable. And as I showed you earlier when I was right next to my router, I didn't have any issues at ultra high fidelity. So this is probably why I had some issues then, because I was away, I had the wall in between the router and myself. Now, I do wish to point out something to bring to your attention, which is when I restarted the game completely from scratch, using the new game option and not going back in time from a previous save, it was actually much more choppy both when I was right next to my router and also when I was away 10, 15 meters in my green room with the wall separating us. All right, time to play our weekly Tuesday VD versus Oculus Link game where you get to guess which one is virtual desktop and which one is Oculus Link. Make sure to watch until the end of this video as I'll be revealing which one is Virtual Desktop and which one is Oculus Link. Is Oculus Link A, is Oculus Link B, is Virtual Desktop A or is Virtual Desktop B? So what you're seeing at the moment is basically at the very start when you launch a brand new game, you'll see a white screen with a Half-Life Alyx logo appearing. What I find very interesting is that both the Oculus Link and the Virtual Desktop are actually recorded at the same frame rate. However, one of the introductions actually take longer than the other. Now let's pay our attention to a couple things as the scenes are unveiled to us. First of all, look at the colors quite closely. There is a difference between one and the other. I do do color correction, of course, but I never touch the color of the actual footage from an Oculus device. It is completely untouched and raw. And then the other thing is, look at the jagged edges. There is a noticeable difference between one and the other as well, especially on the radio area and then the cables that you'll see in the landscape. For the purpose of this Oculus Link and virtual desktop test, both performance settings are set to medium. Try to see if you find any differences in the bottles that I picked up. For example, look at the hand or look at the color of the glass or see how the light is bouncing on the actual material. And then when we look at the ledge of the balcony, again, you can see the specularity and whether there are any more jagged lines in the other. And also look at any stuttering. Is there a stuttering in one versus the other? Is one smoother than the other? Try to see the differences. Same thing when we look at the pots now, those pots are pretty awesomely done. There are like custom materials put on them. They look very authentic. But again, see the differences, whether you can find any. In this scene, we get to see a little creature in a jar, which has quite a lot of effects. There's a lot of particles and glowing going on. See if you can find any of the differences there as well. So we did the comparison outdoors, now we're doing the comparison a bit more indoors. So again, we're inside some kind of kitchen basement of some kind, which looks really old and rugged and dusty and dirty and really a lot of grime around. So try to see if you can find any noticeable differences between the indoors and also you can see outside the window with the characters there.
before I reveal which one is Virtual Desktop and which one is Oculus Link, I just want to give a very quick shout out to all those who went to watch and comment on one of the previous videos, which was all about custom songs in O-Shape and creating custom choreography. You guys are awesome. Remember to leave a comment below so I can give you a shout out in the next video and also you'll be helping the channel, so all good. All right, so you want to know which is which, which one's Virtual Desktop, which one's Oculus Link? If you thought that A was virtual desktop, then you would have got it wrong because Oculus Link was A and virtual desktop is B. I would like to thank you for watching this video. I hope you find it useful. Remember to like and subscribe. Share some love so that you and I, together we can grow the community and help as many people as possible in VR because ultimately that is what it's all about. All right, until next time, take it easy. And as always, DJ, take it away. Woo.